Hi parents, soon-to-be parents, and all guardians. Welcome to Life with Little Ones channel. In my today's video, I will share 10 things you ought to never say to your teenagers. Here are 10 things you should never say to teenagers. Being a parent is not simple responsibility, particularly when your children are teenagers. That is the point at which it appears you're consistently clashing with them. We all know that words can cut farther than a blade, which is the reason knowing how to speak with your children is very important. So, what's expressions, phrases that are no-no to teens? Continue to watch to find out. However, before we begin, remember to subscribe into our channel and turn on bell icons so you won't miss any of our new videos to come. Counting down from number 10, you're okay. On the off chance that your teenager is irritated about something, whether their crush did not notice them or a misunderstood with their best friend, you shouldn't not simply let them know that they are okay. As indicated by Dr. Jen, a psychotherapist and author of the A to Z book Guide for Raising a Happy and Confident Kids, this sort of reaction from you will just make the situation more worse. Sure, their little high school issues may appear to be inconsequential to you, just like you adults with bills and obligations. However, you should remember yourself at this age. Your child isn't okay. They need your help to get through these pessimistic feelings. So, be there to comfort in times of need. Pay attention to their feelings more. Recognize their sentiments. In this way, they will not be scared to come to you again if something terrible happens to them. They will know that you will continuously give them the help they need. They will be comfortable to tell you their personal problems. Number 9. I'm so fat. Yes, admit or not, we get disappointed with ourselves some of the time. Whether you call yourself fat, ugly duckly, stupid, or insert any negative word here, you should stop this habit. Particularly if you are a parent. According to the study directed by the University of Notre, found that parents who criticize themselves in front of their youngsters can really have a big impact on their children's self-confidence. And that is because our parents are our good examples as we are growing up and their conduct sets us in model for us. So for an instance, when a mother calls herself fat constantly, her little girl subconsciously figures out how to view her body and appearance. The same way, in addition to this negative self-talk, does not do good to you either, so don't be excessively hard on yourself. After all, everyone makes mistakes sometimes. Number 8. Hurry up! <laughs> Morning up where to be each parent's most hectic piece of the day. Hey, you got to get the children up? Dress and full of breakfast all before the bus school shows up. And of course, it can be special hard with teenagers that doesn't want to get up out of bed or it takes them forever picking out what to wear. However, shouting with them to hurry up is not a response. Psychologist and co-creator of Child Minds, Dr. Linda Akrid Olo, says that all this hurrying simply puts unnecessary tension on your child. They don't need that before they are heading to school, where they manage significantly more issues and stress. 
So, as a parent, you might need to mellow it a bit and most certainly, don't yell. Remind them that their morning meal is getting cold or there's very little left. Teenagers have an exceptional craving after all. Whatever you do, simply attempt to keep a positive and fun-loving energy toward the beginning of the day. Your child will, without a doubt, feel a depth of gratitude. Number 7. Don't be sad. Pre-adulthood is a period of emotional roller coaster. Young people can be hyper with lots of laughter one moment and afterward crying for apparently no reason at all. And it's particularly challenging for parents to adapt when their kid is emotional. They console them by saying, don't be sad. But Dr. Debbie Glaser, the author of Family Support Services at the Postal Carrier, Siegel Institute for Youth study says that don't say these phrases don't be to your teenagers as they send the message that the children's feelings aren't substantial and that it is not all right to feel how they feel at this specific moment. If your teenager is sad or crying, sit down with them and try to help them work out through their sentiments whenever they are happy with opening up to you. They will feel significantly improved, getting their stresses off their mind and their heart-to-heart -heart talk will just strengthen your parents and child bonding. Number 6. Let me do it. Well, it is just normal for each parent who need to help their child in the event that he or she is battling with something. However, offering direct assistance, particularly doing something yourself as opposed to letting them sort it out on their own, can set them up for disappointment later on in their future. According to Dr. Mirna, teacher at the Division of Psychology at Drexel College and author of Raising Thinking Youngsters, explained that if you tend to bounce in too early, you might sabotage your youngsters' independence. They will foster a habit of continuing looking to others for answers, and that's what nobody wants that for their children. So, in the event that you need your youngsters to grow up, to be an independent, try not to be so involved. You can anyway guide them through an issue and help them track down the right solutions themselves. In this way, your youngster will grow up knowing that everything is in their own hands, rather than innocently sitting tight for someone else to come and make every one of their concerns disappear. Number 5. You are so incredible. Mental health science distributed a truly fascinating study on something many refer to as inflated praise and its impact on youngsters with low confidence. For instance, you are great at this is considered a simple praise while you are extraordinary great at this is inflated praise. In one of the investigation's tests, 240 youngsters drew all well-known Van Gogh's painting. An expert painter then, at that point, gave them not with inflated, simple, or no praise at all. All written on it, after getting the note, the youngsters were requested to pick one more artistic creation to duplicate, either a simple one or a difficult one. The youngsters with low confidence, who had received inflated braces for the most part, went for the simple pictures, while the youngsters with high confidence, who had received simple braces, ordinarily picked up the difficult ones. This means actually intends that inflated braces some way or another put significantly more tension on youngsters with low confidence rather than empowering them. They begin to stress over meeting the high requirements you've set, so they are reluctant to take on the challenges as for how you ought to encourage your youngsters at the point when they work really hard. We will get into that in our next point, which is 
Number four, good job. Good job could appear like a genuine harmless comment to somebody's work or accomplishments. However, in all honesty, it's not that really great for your children to hear. According to Dr. Susan, a social therapist and top best-selling author, she says that it's better to focus on how your youngsters has accomplished the outcome. As opposed to simply giving them your response. For instance, if your child drew an image, you can ask questions like, what made you go for this color? Or, what inspired you to add this part here? Getting clarification on some details and the work it took to get the outcome? It maintains the attention on our child and make them to make sense of their decisions, both of which help their self-confidence. But, good job is so conventional and doesn't encourage your teenagers as much as you think. Number 3. You need to be a good role model for your younger siblings. Ah, uh, I remember that one. If you have a teenagers and they have a younger siblings, things can be particularly distressing in the house. Obviously, young adult has an incredibly short breaker and their little brother or sister can set it off. However, parents additionally prefer to criticize their adolescents for their mistake with the common phrases like, you have to set a good role model for your little brothers and sisters. Dr. Katherine Carse, a teacher of youth instructor at Old Dominion University, says that it's better to utilize these phrases like, your little brother, sisters admires you a lot, or you're such a good example for your younger brother and sister. Along these phrases, you don't put a big burden of being perfect on your teenager's shoulder. They are under enough pressure already, and they don't need bother anymore. Number 2. Go Kiss Grandma Yes, indeed, from an early age, the vast majority of us are compelled to embrace or kiss our family members, even on the off chance that we would truly prefer not to. And it's not because we don't cherish our family, it's simply that a few of us are not really comfortable with embracing and kissing individuals. As others may be in constraining your children to do. This might leave a profound subconscious feelings that they don't have absolute control over their bodies and their display of affection. According to Peter Sander, founder of the National Association for People Abuse in the Childhood, warns that youngsters ought to never be compelled to do whatever makes them awkward particularly when it comes to actual contact. So, be certain to continuously give your youngsters the decision, asking would you want to kiss grandma goodbye? And, on the off chance that the response is no, don't push it. They can continuously do it in their own time. And, number one, I am so proud of you. Ah, astonishing, isn't it? Yes, this is totally completely harmless and apparently empowering phrase. It is not generally so wonderful as you thought. As indicated by Dr. Carl Picker, a therapist and author of the book Getting Through Your Youngster's Pre-Adulthood, it is not that great idea of a plan to give your kid a blanket statement of encouragement. That is because the youngsters might begin to feel answerable for this express parental pride. Like, they need to keep it up in light of the fact that it's the main way the mother or father will feel significantly better or love them. Hey, kids think a specific way, regardless of whether it is not true. 
So, on the off chance that you feel like it could influence your child or it already has, try to replace this phrase with, that's good for you. This gives the youngster more credit for their accomplishments and put all the concentration on them rather on you. After all, that is where it genuinely belongs, right? And here is a reward, the phrases that will generally trigger your teenagers into a negative emotions. Goodness gracious, the Wi-Fi is down and I don't know when it will be back up. Hopefully, it works in your home as well. And so, what do you think? What expressions or phrases should never be said to teenagers? Please comment below and don't forget to click subscribe to stay connected with Life with Little Ones. Have a nice day all!